Are you ready? I'm not mad, but I'm seeing a lot of red. Okay, let's see some red gems. Sure, let's get at it. You guys have loved our color episodes. We did. Yeah. We did purple, mm -hmm. black, mm -hmm. green, mm -hmm. pink, mm -hmm. and now we're gonna do red. Red. <laughs> Which is a little bit of a twist on pink, but that's okay. Red and pink may not be very different on the color spectrum, but as far as gemology goes, they're quite different in in price, especially and in value. If you want to know more about the differences between red and pink gems, or really any gemstones in general, head over to gemstones.com. It's an incredible resource if you want to find out more about your favorite gemstones or gemstones that you may have never heard of before. But also, you can buy red gemstones. So one of our authorized retailers, JTV, they have a ton of red gemstones. They have some red specimens, also red jewelry, like the jewelry that we're wearing. We'll include links in the description of some of the gems that we feature today, as well as the jewelry that we're wearing. So you can check that out if you want to purchase. So let's get into some unboxing. You want to open it? Sure. Ooh, that oh, looks cinnamony. Doesn't well, that look like cinnamon? <laughs> What do these got? Oh, wow, that is so dark. You can hardly tell it's red. Oh, so at first I thought mm, maybe they're garnet because they had that rich fiery color, but the crystal system doesn't look quite right. Not Those right. are probably clinohumite. It's clinohumite on clinochlorite. That's a tongue twister. It really is. It looks kind of metallic. That yes. looks like a greeny, clinochlorite looks um, kind of green and really lustrous. Pretty lustrous. So clinohumite is a member of the humite group, which is pretty obscure outside of the gemological industry. And it's pretty close to olivine, which a popular variety of olivine is peridot. Mm -hmm. So it has some similarities. It's a magnesium silicate. Let's talk about the cause of color. We're talking about color sure, yeah. here. So this is like a really deep, rich red. Mm -hmm. Clinohumite is caused by iron and magnesium. Red can be caused by a lot of different impurities. You can have iron, magnesium, chromium, defects in a crystal structure, irradiation. And so red can come from a lot of different types of coloring agents. Yeah, it was discovered originally in 1876 actually in ejecta, limestone ejecta from Mount Vesuvius, so, which is super cool. And actually, I, I have more etymology for us. Its name, clinohumite, comes from its crystal system, which is monoclinic, clin. And then the other half of its name, humite, it's actually named after Sir Abraham Hume, who is a British mineralogist. It can be found all over the world, notably in Tajikistan and Siberia. Mm -hmm. These are really rare because usually it's very fine, sort of hard to see uh, crystals, but you can get some much larger, gemmier crystals like, like this one here. So it, it doesn't often form very large, but some specimens can luminesce, some specimens can actually fluoresce under shortwave uh, ultraviolet light, and some of them, uh, maybe this guy, can have uh, moderate to strong pleochroism. So though they are oh. tiny, they can exhibit a lot of optic phenomena. Okay, this guy caught my eye. It well, has that like orangish red color. Yeah, it's sort of rust colored. Well, it's got a lot of uh, striations along the faces of it. Mm-hmm, I but, see some cleavage planes. But it doesn't, and that had me thinking tourmaline, but it doesn't have the right shape, I don't think. Correct. So if you look at it in cross section. Oh, it's a pencil. It, um, it's kind of like a slanted rectangle. So this is actually a gem called crocoite. So you have that like slight, slightly slanted uh, yeah. rectangle that is commonly found in monoclinic crystals. So this is part of the monoclinic crystal system. It's a lead chromate, so it's colored by chromium. Okay. Which is, again, a popular coloring agent for red gems. 1766 uh, is the year that this uh, mineral was first discovered. So we've, we've known about it for a pretty long time. And it was discovered in a really famous locality, the Ural Mountains in Russia. That's where you get a lot of other gems, most notably Alexandrite, high quality Alexandrite. The Ural Mountains are um, part of a really rich geologic mountain range. And so you have a, you have a lot of different geology and interesting um, crystallography there and so it's fun to see another a little bit more niche type of mineral that comes from there. Unfortunately it's kind of prohibitively soft for 
use in jewelry. It's like a two and a half or three on the most scale. So most of the time you're just going to see it in a uh, rough specimen form, which is fine by me. It's a pretty striking specimen. Okay, speaking of rust, this looks kind of rusty as well. Okay, so this very clearly is a copper mineral. This mm -hmm. is something called calcotrichite. This little guy is a is a variety of cuprite and it's actually a, a pretty significant ore of copper. Yeah, cuprite, copper, that's kind of the etymology there. Mm -hmm. And what's happening is the copper is absorbing all the, the blues and greens. And so you get the red reflecting. And so over here, you can see the, the really, really it's a pretty vibrant red calcotrichite yeah. and it's needle-like. And so- So I've got some more etymology for you. So okay. calcotrichite, the trichite is from the Greek word for hairy, trix, which is, in reference to the, the needle-like formation or habit of this mineral. And then the calco derived from the Greek word for copper. So this is hairy copper. Hairy copper. The so that, you live. <laughs> <laughs> so that makes sense with tourmaline then, the trichites, which are kind of like hairy mm -hmm. tubular types of yeah. uh, inclusion. We have like a bunch more we boxes. Have a ways to go, yeah. So let's move those to the side and get this, this guy. You want, you want My to turn? that one? All right, sure. Oh, look at that guy. That's the one that I saw first, yeah. Oh man, oh, oh, this guy's I know cool what, too. I know what this is. Let's talk about this one first. I'm, I'm antsy to talk about this. Okay. This is one of my favorite red gems because a lot of people don't think of it as a red gem. But do you know I what this sure is? I am not. Okay, there are three things that, that help me for this. Okay. One, you see a botryoidal form there. Oh you yeah. You see that yeah. uh, towards the edge? Mm -hmm. Two, hold it. Oh, that's heavy. That's dense. That's dense, yeah. Three, the color. So you have this metallic grayish black with red. So this is- Hematite. <laughs> so hematite. So hematite, a lot of people think of this metallic gray, which it is, but if you actually scratch the surface, uh, it's actually a red. And so a popular test for hematite it's called a streak test. It is a destructive test. Mm -hmm. If you kind of strike a, a piece of hematite, it'll streak red, which other um, like black, like obsidian, other gems yeah. will be like brown or gray it or black. It does not look like it would streak red. Oh, it will. Prehistoric humans were doing the streak test with hematite, using it as a writing utensil and using that streakiness to, uh, to good effect. I didn't know that. We've also found it on Mars. I didn't know that either. So hematite is an iron oxide. Again, we've got another gem colored by iron. Iron is what provides that, that reddish color and it's actually also electrically conductive. So oh, really? watch out. Yeah. It kind of reminds me of Mordor for whatever reason. So this guy is hemimorphite, hemi path, like hemisphere and morphite form. It's a lead silicate and it's actually quite dense. It's actually, it's got a really interesting structure. I actually could imagine that being in like a coral reef. Yeah, actually, oh, you know what? Yeah, it does kind of look like it would maybe belong under the ocean. That's actually where it gets its name, not the ocean part, but the interesting formation. So hemimorphite I mentioned half and form. That's because either end of the crystal has a different termination. That is so cool. It's a little hard to see on these little crystals, but that is where its name comes from. Oh, I love Half that. Half form, yeah. You can actually kind of see the ends are more colorless. So we've talked about cause of color. There are a lot of different types of causes of color, but we haven't talked about this yet. So this, is, this has high lead content. And what has happened here is the lead has um, been exposed to oxygen. So it's kind oh. of been oxidized. It's a reaction. In, yeah, Careful. kind of like rust. So a lot of metals can oxidize. They mm -hmm. often get this like brownish, orangish, reddish color. So that red is a result of um, being oxidized. Okay, let's talk about vanadinite. So okay. I'm gonna take a wild guess and uh, and say that it has vanadium in its crystal structure. That would be correct. So vanadium is is a, an element that can color some gems. So mm -hmm. it's not a very popular coloring ele element 
but it can color some emeralds green. It colors savorite garnet. It can color tanzanite. It often it also colors vanadinite. So the interesting thing about vanadium is it's a transition element. And so when you think about the the electron orbitals, we're going back to to chemistry, high school chemistry. There are certain there are electron orbitals, and the the electrons in the outer shell or outer orbital of vanadium can vary. It can be anywhere from two to five electrons. And as those vary, you have different light interactions. And so you, different, you have different absorption and reflection. And so that can cause red colors. Wow. This variety was uh, first discovered in 1801 in Mexico, which is a land that's pretty rich with uh, with minerals and gems. As its name suggests, vanadinite, major ore of vanadium and also a minor source of lead. This specimen, actually both, if you look really mm -hmm. closely, they have really well-formed crystals. It's in the hexagonal crystal system. You can see a lot of hexagonal prisms on both specimens. I love that even in the tiniest yeah. specimens, they can give you a really good indication of their identity. It's a two and a half to three on the most hardness scale. And to have this high of a luster yeah. on such a soft gem That's is really cool. Pretty remarkable. Yeah. Oh, Whoa. I know what those are. Do you know what this is? Rhodonite, baby. Yeah, so rhodonite and rhodochrosite are often confused for one another. It's not very durable. Rhodonite uh, and rhodochrosite can have just like sweet, gemmy color, but rhodonite often is kind of a paler, it's like a paler pink. And so these, this gem quality rhodonite is really special. So rhodonite has a really interesting history. One of the most famous localities is the Ural Mountains and Russian czars really prized this mm -hmm. gemstone along with Alexandrite. Especially the Romanovs in particular. Yes, and they would have everything from pottery, like massive bowls to knives made out of it. There are even sarcophagi uh, that the royals use to bury their loved ones. But I love the color. I think it's such a beautiful color. Oh yeah, it looks cherry flavored. Actually, did you know that it's trichroic, but usually you only get two colors out of it. So this guy uh, is a five and a half to six and a half on the Mohs hardness scale. And it's actually got two planes of perfect cleavage that are almost at 90 degrees to one another. So the cause of color is manganese and some iron. It's a manganese enosilicate. So it's got somewhat of a complex chemical formula. We love this gem, but yeah. I think there are more. Oh, I love this piece. So this is one of our favorite gems. This is garnet, specifically almondine garnet. You know, for a few reasons. One, the crystal system. So garnet often forms in dodecahedrons or 12-sided crystals. They can form anywhere from dodecahedrons to icosatetrahedrons, which are 24-sided. So sometimes you'll, you'll essentially see anywhere in between there. Um, it has that rich red yeah, color. Deep, deep red. Um, that almondine is famous for. You've got twinning here. Imagine pulling that out of the ground. <laughs> no. This is actually featured on the cover of one of the volumes of the Sisk Gemology Reference, which is an amazing reference book. We can put a link below if you want to learn about any of your favorite gems. That is an, an amazing book. This is colored by iron, so garnet is super complex uh, chemically. It's part of an isomorphous series, meaning chemical elements can replace one another in uh, the crystal structure. And so, this is probably a combination of iron and some chromium that's coloring it. If you were to streak test a garnet, like, you know, drag that one across some... Un Don't do <laughs> no, that. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Well, it actually streaks white. We were talking about some deceptive streaks earlier. Garnet streaks white. And it's a six and a half to seven and a half on the most hardness scale. It's like an, it's an antiquity stone. The, the, the ancient Romans really loved garnet. It's uh, the birthstone of January, so it's a really popular one. And as, as far as like the big three and red gems go, no disrespect to Ruby, but I, as far as red goes, I prefer Garnet to Ruby. I really like the red of Garnet. So Garnet is really interesting, again, because it has this kind of continual replacement of elements in its in its crystal structure. And so the varying amounts of iron, of chromium, it can affect the red color. And so that one is a super iron rich, probably has some chromium in there. 
thought it felt heavy for a second. Oh, 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 oh. that's an important Classic. gemstone. What is that one Zoolander quote like so hot right now? So red spinel, especially pink and red spinel from Tanzania, which is where this oval, 1.96 carat uh, oval is from, is very popular. Spinel has really kind of come into its own recently. Spinel in history has often been mistaken for ruby. These spinels are from two really important localities. This one's from Tanzania, that one's from Burma, and they have a gorgeous red color. So spinel is in the cubic crystal system. It has a Mohs hardness of eight, so it's pretty durable. durable. Spinel is a magnesium aluminum silicate. It's colored by chromium. So there are some key differences between spinel and ruby when it comes to their spectra, and which is important because they often get mistaken for one another. So spinel crystals often form in octahedra, and so spinel spine, I'll give you that etymology, so in reference to their pointed crystals. So we've been, uh, we've been talking about red gems, some of them more obscure, some of them more famous, but there's one more famous still that we have not talked about today. Pretty obvious. You wanna bring it on? Yeah. Ooh. Oh, that's untreated. So these are rubies. So ruby is a type of corundum. Ruby, etymology, ruber, Latin actually, not Greek, for the word red. It's a nine on the hardness scale, which I think you mentioned. So it's, uh, it's great for jewelry. Gets its red color from chromium. So it's an allochromatic gemstone, corundum is an aluminum oxide, and chromium is the cause of color here. This is cool. So both of these are untreated. Often are, they can be pretty included. Red, obviously the color of red, the saturation, the hue is very important when it comes to its value. And so a lot of rubies are treated. They can be heated to improve the color. They're often also filled with lead glass often, but it can be other fillers to, to fill any fractures, to increase durability and to improve their appearance, to hide inclusions. Both both of these stones are untreated. To have such good color and good clarity, a natural untreated ruby is really That's phenomenal. remarkable, yeah. So that one is from Mozambique, which is getting increasingly popular because a lot of the Mozambican rubies look pretty similar to the famous Burmese or uh, oh, rubies okay. from Myanmar, the pigeon's blood rubies. And so that that's an amazing stone. This is from Tanzania, which is which is also an important locality for corundum or for ruby. And so these are really nice gems. So have you got a favorite one on the table? Uh, this that's is, not this one. I know. <laughs> it's so hard to I know. This is, overlook this that one. This is really tricky. I'll eliminate one for you. I'm gonna go okay. row tonight. That's a great choice. I was kind of, I was debating that. I think I'm gonna do the Tanzanian untreated okay. ruby. I'm not mad, but I'm seeing a lot of red. So sometimes that doesn't have to be a bad thing. <laughs> but if you want to learn more about red gemstones, go to gemstones.com. We've got articles, videos, and you can learn all about these and more red gems. If any of these guys caught your eye or you, have, you want to get one for yourself, 
to add to your collection, head over to jtv.com. There is a ton of variety in gemstones in red and every other color imaginable. And let me tell you, these faceted red gemstones are 100% collector's items. These are amazing, yeah. one of a kind types of gems to add to your collection. I would love to have any of these in my collection. And uh, if you guys don't add them to yours, I might add them to mine, so hurry up. Yeah, you gotta be Rebecca. <laughs> <laughs> And of course, do not forget to like and subscribe. And of course, ring the bell, hit that bell button so you don't miss out on our future videos. See you later.